Hi, most traders, especially beginners, overlook risk management and focus only on predicting future prices and future trends. But no matter how accurate your predictions might be, a poor risk management can break any successful strategy. In this video, I'll show you a simple way to size your trades properly. And we will code the whole approach in Python to backtest it on real historical data. If you love algorithmic trading and backtesting strategies, you can download the code and the data files for free from the link in the description of this video. So it's everything you will need to run the backtest from your side. The strategy I chose is very simple and it was introduced in one of our previous videos. We will consider the one minute time frame. Then we define a box of five candles corresponding to a five minute duration. The box shows the price range, meaning the maximum high and the minimum low of the selected five minutes window. Then in the next five minutes, we will check if we have a breakout or a candle closing above or below the box limits. If a breakout is identified, we enter a trade in the same direction of this breakout. In this example, we have a long setup. So the breakout is in the up direction. We will enter a buying position and the stop loss is set at the low of the breakout candle while the take profit is set using a take profit stop loss ratio. Now this is where we calculate the trade size. First we need to determine the stop loss distance measured in currency units. For example if we are trading the euro US dollar we will express the stop loss amount in US dollars. However we can only calculate this if we already know the trade size. So instead let's take the opposite approach. We first decide how much we are willing to risk let's say $100 per trade, then we calculate the trade size that ensures $100 loss if the stop loss is hit. This will allow us to manage how much money we are risking per trade and we will express this amount as a percentage of the current account balance. If, for example, the account balance is $10,000, and we are willing to risk 1%, that's a risk amount of $100 per trade. Before we continue, let's remember that one pip is equal to 0.0001 of price difference, that's for the euro US dollar pair. And in general, if you are trading standard lots, one lot is equal to 100,000 units. Now the size in units can be obtained by calculating the risk amount in US dollar, then multiplying this amount by the exchange rate and then dividing by the stop loss distance in currency units. We will see this in details in the coding part, but at this point we can notice that the size of the trade will decrease if the stop loss distance increases, and in the opposite, the size of the trade will increase if the stop loss distance decreases. Now let's automate this in Python and see how this approach can be implemented in an algorithmic backtest. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. Here we're loading the data. I'm using the candlesticks one minute time frame, 2023 up to 2025 for the euro US dollar. Then we define the box start column. That's once every five minutes. And we mark these by the value one. As this is a previously developed strategy, and since it was detailed in a previous video, I'm not going through all the details here in order not to waste your time. I'll leave a link for the previous video if you are into those details and you've missed that one. So you can follow the strategy details, the backtest, and so on. But very briefly, this is where we are creating the uh, rolling windows of five candles. And then we're checking the high values and the low values of the box of five minutes. Then we are filling the maximum and the minimum in two different columns. Then we check if we have a breakout in the up or the low direction, so below the minimum or above the maximum. And we indicate this in a new column named break signal, one for a bearish breakout and two for a bullish breakout. So now we can see that we have this break signal and we can see that we have those bearish breakouts happening here. This is just a small slice of the whole data frame. In this cell, we're cleaning any redundant signals, so signals happening consecutively or subsequently within the same block of five candles. We just keep the first one because we need to catch the signal as early as possible. And now we can count the signals that we have in the data frame. So we have around 62,000 bullish signals and around 62,000 as well bearish signals. And now we can visualize these candles or these signals. We can see that we have bullish signals, bullish signals as well here. So that's a bullish as well. These are two bearish signals as well. So the code is working properly and we have our signals. So now we can move on to the backtest. And now this is where the backtest happens. So we have our signal function that we're going to use. Then we are using the backtesting package to uh, inherit from the strategy class and define our new class, which is actually the trade management part and the risk management part. Now, previously we were using the size of the trades as a certain percentage 
of the current account balance. In other words, let's say this is 5%. So we take 5% of the current account balance and we use that money to buy or to sell uh, enough euro or US dollars. So it doesn't take into account the stop loss distance. It's just using the whole 5% money to buy or sell the uh, trade size. And that's for sure one way of doing things, but it's not the best because if you buy with 5%, but then you have to put the stop loss distance a bit far away, then the risk you are taking is huge. It's not within these 5%. So it's not limited to 5% of your uh, account. The trade itself can become a losing trade and it might exceed the value of 5% of the account balance. There is a better way of managing risk. But before we move on, actually the results were 3%, 3.2% of uh, returns. So that's the percentage. I used a $10,000 account, a margin of one over five. I didn't use any commission or spread. So the spread threshold is put to zero for now, but this is just to show you the quality of the indicator. And I could plot the results to show you the equity curve. And we can see the increase or the positive trend of the equity. Now, obviously we're not using any fees, any commissions and so on, but this is also an indicator. I mean, this backtest proves that the indicator that we are using, the box setup and the way we are using it is a good way to predict kind of the future of the price. So it gives us some kind of an edge over the market. It might not be enough to cover for all the fees and the commissions and keep the strategy a full winning strategy, but it's already a good starting point. Now, the better way of risk management, if you want to keep the uh, maximum drawdown and the management of the drawdowns to a minimum, we need to define the sizing of the trades based on the stop loss position. Remember that in this strategy, the stop loss is positioned at the low or the high of the current candle that's happening where the breakout is happening. So the stop loss is somehow defined by the candle shape. And this is why we need to define the uh, risk in terms of percentage of the current account balance. So here I'm using 1% of the equity per trade. So that's how much I want to risk no matter where I place the, uh, or I position the stop loss uh, value. Then I'm using a take profit stop loss ratio of 2.2. You might want to change these and experiment with different values. I'm just using some random numbers here. Then in this line, we're querying the equity value. So the current account balance. Then we define the pip size, which is 10 to minus four, as we have mentioned, 0 0.0001. And that's for Forex and precisely for the Euro US dollar. This has to change for different assets. So then we have the exchange rate, which is the current closing price. So the last candle's closing price. And if we have a signal in the long direction and we don't have any open positions, we're going to define the current low, the current close of the current candle. And then the stop loss is positioned at the current low. So that's the value. And the take profit is equal to the distance of the stop loss times the take profit stop loss ratio plus the current close. So we're positioning everything based on the current closing price. And now we can compute the uh, stop loss distance that we will be using for the uh, sizing of the trade. So the stop loss distance is the current closing price minus the stop loss itself. Okay, so that's the distance from the current closing price to the level of the stop loss that we have just defined, which is basically the low of the current candle or the high of the current candle if we are talking about shorting uh, the market. But in this case, we have a signal equal to, so that's a long position. And the stop loss distance has to be at least five pips. I mean, if the stop loss is closer than five pips to the current price, it's meaningless to trade because that's way too close to the opening uh, of the position and that's not going to be easy uh, to trade nor to actually compute the size of the current trade. So it's going to result in a very uh, large size of trades. And sometimes we will not be able to open it, open these large trades because it requires a large margin as well. But anyway, this is unrealistic. We're not going to open extremely large uh, trades if you are scalping or in any uh, kind of strategies. So if the stop loss distance is less than five pips, we simply return, we don't open anything. So we, we exit this function. But then if not, so if we have a stop loss distance greater than five pips, we're going to compute the risk amount, which is equal to the current equity times the risk percentage. 
So this we have already mentioned in this video. So if we have a current equity of $10,000 and the risk percentage is 1%, that's $100 of risk amount. Then the size of the trade in units, remember that one lot is 100,000 units. So here we are computing the size in units of trades. And it's very important to know which unit are we working in because this is where the headache comes from, actually. If you are using a backtesting library, and then you are computing in a different unit of a sizing units, it's not going to work correctly for the backtest. So here we are using units, and then these are equal to the risk amount in dollars times the current exchange rate divided by the stop loss distance. So that's the stop loss distance in US dollars. And so this is it. Then we apply a buying position. We need to cast the size and in units into an integer because with this division and multiplication, we might have a floating number, but backtesting library expects an integer for its size. Anyway, it will not matter much because you are actually sacrificing few decimal digits and usually the size in units is going to be in thousands or a hundred thousand and something like this. So this approximation is not going to undermine the trading strategy nor the backtest. So then we pass the stop loss, the take profit and so on. Same thing for the bearish logic. So if we have a bearish signal, we're going to compute where well, we put the five pips minimum stop loss distance uh, condition, and then we compute the risk amount. We also compute the size in units, and that's what we're going to use. Now, the interesting part again in this way of risk management is that it's uh, inversely proportional to the stop loss distance. In other words, if we have a very close stop loss distance, since we are not risking much distance, we can increase the size in units or the size of the trade. And that's what's happening in this formula, in this equation. In contrary, on the contrary, if we have a very large stop loss distance, imagine you're using this strategy on a daily time frame, then the stop loss distance is going to be uh, relatively wide. And you don't want to trade with 5% of your current account balance using a very large stop loss distance it's going to result in a very high risk. And if we don't limit this risk before opening the trade or while opening the trade, the strategy is definitely undermined by this huge risk we are taking for each of the trades. Okay, now we can run this again. Returns percentage of 18.45% and the maximum drawdown percentage of minus 5.3%. And this is where I first look actually. The returns are very important, obviously, but also you need to check what kind of maximum drawdown percentage you have. So in the worst days, this strategy is going to give you a, a drawdown of minus 5.3%. The average drawdown is minus 0.33%. And if you compare this to uh, the returns percentage of 18%, that's an excellent risk management in this case for this strategy. Now, remember, I chose the minutes time frame, So that's the most challenging time frame to trade algorithmically. I usually don't trade this Time frame because it's very hard to find anything that works and it's actually very volatile very uncertain because the price is jumping up and down and it's very hard for algorithms to adapt to such a behavior but in this case i just wanted to try and experiment on this strategy now there is one thing i should be underlining the number of trades here are 51 and the number of trades in a classic that we've used previously is 51,860. So it took all the trades in this case because of these conditions where we are not passing any trades if the stop loss distance is less than five pips, for example. Also, if uh, the size of the trade is a bit wide, it might not fit within the margin or the available margin uh, of the current account or the current equity. So all of these parameters will be filtering some of the trades in order to decrease the risk. Now we can also verify that the uh, risk is constant by checking the trades. So that's the list of trades provided by the backtesting uh, library. So I'm going to uh, go to stats dot underscore trades and I'm just printing the first 30 trades first 30 rows from the trades data frame. And let's check in the profit and loss column, the negative values. So these are the trades closed by the stop loss position. And this is where the sizing changes so that we are risking around 1% of the current uh, account balance for every trade. So the losses are going to be more or less equal. This is how they should be theoretically. So we have minus $110, $108, 110 again, 121, 
118 and so on. So they are more or less hovering around the same value and they might be increasing uh, with the number of rows. The reason is the account balance is increasing actually. And so 1% of the current account balance or the current equity is going to be growing as well. It's going to be increased as a value. So now we know that everything is working properly. The code is working well, just as we intended. And we can run this approach on different strategies. So you can copy and paste actually uh, this class and modify it, modify the uh, content a bit and use it for different strategies. And this was it. This was a good example how you can manage the risks per, uh, per trade. So from now on, when we are trading better strategies using better indicators on this channel, I'm going to try this for a couple of videos and see how it performs and if it will improve the results we are obtaining. And that's it for today. I hope you guys liked it. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.